Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 tutorial where I will show you how to create uh, an inventory with a crafting station for multiple characters. So what we see here is the end result. There are two characters on the screen and we can click it to uh, change the selection of the character and then move around and pick up loot. And the loot is just uh, some spheres uh, on the canvas really we'll pick up some stuff here and then we can click with the right mouse button and you can see this is Jack's inventory and we can uh, escape and now we have John's inventory and you can see what is in John's inventory uh, you have uh, these kinds of loot four kinds of loot and of the blue one here we have two in John's inventory um, and we can drag that to another position we can drag it over and if it doesn't fit it will move back uh, to another position and then what we can do is drag uh, stuff into the graphic station for example I will drag one blue in there and you can see that there's only one blue left here and for example I'll get a green one and then we can craft and the item is crafted and moved back to the inventory and then if we go here you can see uh, that is John tax inventory and they all are independent of each other. So how does this work? Let's go look into the code. Um, what actually happens is there is in this uh, uh, project there are two uh, layouts. So the main layout here, let's go check that out. Um, this is a selector for uh, selecting the uh, actor actually. We go with an actor that uh, the, ma the little man walking around is called an actor and is in a family here. You can see that here. Um, and then there is the objects uh, layout where there's uh, all of the different kinds of loot which can be spawned and also this uh, counter text and uh, counter uh, background here that is set on top of the uh, infantry box. So if you go and look at the main layout here, we see that uh, there's a background layer and a dialogue layer. I'll just hide that. So on the background layer, there's all of the little loot here I placed around and the two actors. And the dialogue layer contains all of the things of the assets here that comprise the uh, dialogue and all of the sections for it. So <clears throat> in the dialogue, you have uh, inventory slots and inventory slots have a slot number you can see this is slot number one uh, zero slot number one slot number two and stuff like that up until slot number 19 so there are 20 slots these are crafting stations and this is crafting station number minus one and minus two and you'll see in a few moments why it's negative um, and it's also got an instance variable denoting what is currently in that station and here we have the crafting result. There's only one of them, so it doesn't really have instance variables. There's the button that does the crafting, actually. Um, and that's basically it. Nothing more. Um, what you do see here in this main layout, that is an extra uh, layer called data. Uh, that's because we're going to create dictionaries at runtime. Um, and whenever you create an object in Construct, you need to specify a layer on which you are going to create that object, even though it's something that's invisible, like a dictionary. Uh, so for that uh, purpose, uh, what I usually do if I need to do something like that is create a, a dummy layer called data, place it somewhere on top. Um, and it doesn't really contain anything except for the inner runtime created uh, uh, dictionaries or arrays or whatever you have for data. So that's basically it. Um, what uh, the event sheets look like, actually there are two different event sheets, one for the actor logic and one for the main event sheet. And I propose to start with the actor logic. So what we'll do here is we'll do something when an actor, whenever an actor is created. Um, so you might know that uh, in Construct 3, for individual object types, you can create something called a container. You can see that here, container. Uh, whatever you uh, put an object type into the container of an other object type, those um, 
uh, object types will be created together, destroyed together, and also picked together, which is very handy for a very a various number of cases. The thing, however, is that you can do that using individual object types, but you cannot do that using families. And that's what's happening here. We have a family called actors, and in that family, we actually have two uh, object types, actor1 and actor2. And uh, how do we now create a, a sort of a container for those actors? Because each actor needs to have its own notion of an inventory and have its own notion of how many object types there is in that inventory actually. And uh, to keep track of that, there are actually two different uh, dictionaries. The inventory dictionary will contain all of the slots of the dictionary and it will contain uh, the content of what is in that slot at the moment. Whereas the inventory count dictionary will contain the number of those objects that are in that actor's inventory. So what happens is whenever an actor gets created, there are two instance variable calls, um, inventory ID and inventory count ID. And the only purpose they serve is to retain the unique ID, the UID, of the inventory and the inventory count dictionaries that belong to that actor. So that's what we do here. When the actor is created, we create its inventory dictionary on the data layer, and we also create the inventory count dictionary on the data layer. And whenever we do that, we retain the UID of that inventory and we set it into the UID of the actor. And what we're then going to do is like initialize those values uh, we have uh, a global variable called inventory count. Um, that's the number 20 in there right now. So it will loop this thing 20 times and it will add the value empty into that inventory 20 times and zero into the inventory count 20 times. Actually. So that's what's happening here. So that's for the uncreated uh, functionality of an actor. So you'll see here at the top, you've got a global number called active actor. And that active actor is actually the UID of the actor that is currently selected. So in order to uh, make this more handy, we've created a select actor, select actor uh, a function where we get the UID of a certain actor. We pick the actor using the UID we get passed as a parameter. We set the selector to that position and we pin that selector to that actor because that selector has got the pin behavior actually. Now, and then we set this global variable active actor to the UID we get past spawn. So anywhere inside the code, anywhere inside the logic, we can determine which actor is currently highlighted by just referring to this global number called active actor. So here we have the different uh, keyboards, um, uh, up, up, down, left, right. We just pick the instance of the actor, which is the active actor, and then we simulate the pressing of left, right, up and down for that active actor. That's essentially what we do. When clicking with the left mouse button on an actor, we just call this function, select actor. And when clicking with the right mouse button, we first have to select it and then show the dialog uh, that shows the, that guy's inventory. But we only do that if the layer dialog isn't visible yet, because showing and hiding the dialog is actually just by showing and hiding the layer where the dialog start is on. So that's for the uh, actor logic. Let's move now to the main event sheet. And uh, the main event sheet is comprised out of a number of sections. Uh, and we'll start with the general logic here. And the general logic starts with uh, what happens at the start of a layout. Actually, what we do at the start of the layout is we use the Ajax plugin to get the recipes from uh, a recipe JSON file. So let me just see what in the recipe JSON file. And what we what it says here is if the first ingredient is loot one and the second ingredient is loot two, then the result will be loot five. Similar for loot 3 and 4 will result in loot 6. 
So you'll see that if we go to the objects here again, you'll see that this, this is loot 4, this is loot 5, this is loot. So it's actually the object type names that are identified here. And whenever we combine 1 and 2, or 2 and 1, we get 5, 3 and 4, or 4 and 3, we get 6. So there is no recipe for 1 and 3, for example, so that won't result in anything. So those are the recipes. Those recipes actually get loaded into the JSON file here called recipes at the start of the layout. We use that using the, the Ajax plugin. We parse the JSON into the recipes JSON object. And just to make sure we hide dialog if it were to be shown at design time, for example. And then we go and pick a random instance of an actor and we already select that. And then we call something called initialize dialog. And we'll get to that in a few moments. And it's actually just to do some initial setup of the dialog because not everything is uh, set up at design time. Some things are set up at runtime. And you'll see that in a couple of minutes. So there's some more general logic here. Whenever an actor collides with the loot, and the loot is actually on the background layer. Why do we do that? Because there's also going to be loot in the little inventory slots of the dialog. So that there's no different, uh, there's no different object types for that. It's all the same object type loot, but the, the actor is only able to pick up the loot which is on the background layer and will never pick up the loot which is which happens to be on the dialog. So whenever that happens, when we collide with the loot, uh, we call a function called add loot, and what we do is we pick the object type name of the loot we've collided with. Uh, and we pick the actor's UID. This is uh, actually the function just adds an item of that object type name to that actor. And of course, whenever that's done, it's it's actually in that act in that actor's dictionary, and the loot should be destroyed from the background layer, so it doesn't get picked up twice. So, and also we have this little thing called uh, on created for the loot. Uh, actually, the the loot uh, the size of the sprite is a bit larger than 32 by 32 pixels. So, in order to to have everything similar to 32 by 32, we just initialize that here whenever the loot is created. So that's for the general logic. Pretty simple. So that's for as for the interaction of the dialogue. We have actually uh, collapsed some of this stuff here uh, to make it more uh, insightful. Um, we have only a few number of, uh, of interactions set up here, but they are pretty complicated. So let me go over them and uh, show you what they really do. So all of the loot has gotten the drag drop behavior as actually based on the uh, family here family behavior has got drag drop and it's also got to move to behavior because you'll see in a minute that it sometimes needs to move to uh, a certain inventory slot for example if you move to an inventory slot that is already occupied it will automatically move back to its original slot and that's done using the move to behavior or for example when something is crafted the result of the crafting will go back into the inventory and that's also using the move to behavior so you also need a move to behavior for the loot actually so what we do here um, whenever we drag and drop a loot we pick the nearest crafting station whenever the mouse cursor is over the crafting background, so that's well, that, that's essential because um, if we weren't to check if the cursor is over the crafting background, let me show you, this is the crafting background and this is the inventory background. Whenever we were to do that, when we would drop the, the loot here, for example, it would try to drop it also here. Uh, because pick nearest, it doesn't really care if it's uh, 10, 10 pixels away or 200 pixels away, nearest is nearest. So we need to check that if we're dropping it somewhere over here, the user actually means to drop it into a crafting station and not into some other inventory slot. So that's what we do here. If the user intends to drop it in a crafting station, we detect that by checking if the cursor is over the crafting background or not. And then what we do is we pick the actor 
by picking the instance with UAD active actor, which is that global variable I talked about just now. And in the same the same event, actually we just pick the inventory belonging to that actor and the inventory count belonging to that actor. And we only have to do this logic whenever the dialog layer is visible. So when dragging a loot over the crafting station, we pick the nearest one and we snap it to its X and Y coordinate. Uh, only with the dialog is visible. Uh, so that's what we do here. So then we need to check if there's something in the crafting station at the moment. And we do that by checking if the content of the crafting station, the content, station content is one of the instance variables. We check if that's empty or not. If that's not empty, there's already something in that uh, crafting station. So if the star slot is lower than zero, that means that we're dragging from another crafting station. But what is this, this start slot? This start slot is actually a global number. And whenever a drag operation starts, the, stra the start slot will be set to the slot from where we are dragging from, the starting point of the drag operation. And you'll see here at the bottom that when we're starting dragging over an inventory slot, we will set the start slot to the slot number of that inventory slot. Whenever we're dragging a start operation, starting a drag operation from a crafting station, we will set it to the crafting station number. But both crafting stations have a negative number, minus one and minus two. So that's what we detect here. If the start slot is lower than zero, it means we're actually coming from the, uh, the starting slot is actually a crafting station. So what we'll do here is first we need to reset the picking. Uh, and then we pick the crafting station by evaluating that the station number needs to be the starting slot and then we move it back to the starting slot. You might ask yourself, okay, why is this condition in here, pick or crafting station? Well, actually the context of this, uh, of this uh, event is whenever um, the loot is nearest to a crafting station. So we pick the nearest crafting station and if we were not to pick all here, the context would remain the crafting station that we're nearest to. And that's usually not the starting slot. So this event would select nothing because the starting slot is not equal to the crafting station here. So we need to first pick all of the crafting station. So we lose the context of which crafting station we're using right now. And then we repick the, the, the correct crafting station using the starting slot and we move it back over there. So else, meaning that the start slot is not negative, it means that we're actually coming uh, from another inventory slot. And then what we'll do is we will say clear crafting station. And because there is a number of things you need to do here, I'm really a big fan of functions in Construct 3. So uh, we'll call that function and that does all of the things we need to do. Uh, you'll see here that it's got a number of parameters and I'll come back to that in a few minutes. So that, in essence, what it will do, it will, it will just uh, move the, the 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 thing that's the loot that's already in the crafting station back to the inventory, because then the thing we are dragging into the crafting station might replace it. So maybe it's uh, a good idea to to go and show that to you. So let me just restart the application here um, and see what that uh, really does. So now let's go and pick up some stuff. We go to the inventory and let's go and put that in the crafting station. So that's now what the on drag drop behavior uh, inside the crafting behavior. That's what we just did. And we're going to do that again. And we're going to drop it over the same crafting station. Look what happens. The the green the this one stays in there and the one that was in there goes back. So same here green stays and blue goes away. Blue stays, green goes away. So uh, the thing we are dragging remains in the crafting station. The thing that was in the crafting station goes back into the inventory. And moving that back into the inventory is called clear crafting station. And we'll come back to that function in a moment. So um, now that this is done, uh, we check if the start slot was uh, bigger or equal than zero. 
So uh, the station is empty. That's what we now know. Now know. Uh, the station is empty and we're dragging from an inventory slot. So we get the current count from the inventory and subtract one from it and retain that value for later. So once we dragged from the inventory to the crafting station, that means there's one less of that loot in the inventory because it's now in the crafting station. So what we do is we get that number from the inventory count here the infantry count we just picked here, uh, here, Rob. and then we subtract one from it. What we then do is we set that infantry count to that subtracted value, and we refresh the slot counter. And the slot counter is the little number right over the slot whenever there's more than one loot in uh, of that certain loot type in the infantry of the actor. That's the slot counter. And then there's a function called refresh slot counter to refresh that number given a certain actor and a certain slot. And we'll come back to that function. Pretty simple. Uh, we come back to that later. So we check. The reason why we, uh, we save that value here is because we can be able to check it here. If the value is equal to zero, then what we can do is we set the uh, value of the inventory, which was picked here, uh, right here. We set that value to empty because subtracting one from the value resulted in a value of zero. Then we also need to check that the inventory is now reset for that uh, certain uh, slot and it's uh, reset by setting it to empty. So if the value is not zero, then we will have to pick that inventory slot uh, with uh, the condition of the slot equals the starting slot. And what we'll have to do, if the content is not zero, the loot that was dragged away from the inventory slot needs to be recreated in the, in the inventory slot to represent the rest of the loot that's in there. So let me just uh, also show that. Uh, let's press escape and uh, let's go and pick some more loot up. Like that. So you have to see that this inventory now creates only three loot objects. So in theory, there's uh, actually five things in Jack's inventory, three of those, one of those, and one of those. But actually what's on the screen here, what's, uh, what objects are on the screen, there's only three objects on the screen. One of those, one of those, and one of those. So what happens if we start dragging this one around? Okay, the slot counter is going along with it. But whenever we drag somewhere over here, if we were to drop this, then this slot would remain empty. And that's not what's supposed to happen. Actually, what we need to do, if we drag this over here, we need to create another one of those loot, put it in there, and decrease this value from true to two. And that's what happens. So what we just did is we created another, uh, another uh, of those loot objects. And if we go and put it back, there's also one here, just one, and not two. So what we did here, and we'll come back to that in the code yeah, a bit later, is actually delete one of those, destroy one of those, because there can only be one inside a slot at any given time. The way we represent the fact that there are three of those in Jack's inventory is by these three numbers. This number three here, and not by three uh, individual objects. So now let's go back to the code. Um, all right, and so that's what we do here. We create that object type loot object type name on the dialog label on the slot where it was coming from. Um, and now save the content of the crafting station. So what we do is we set the uh, instance variable station content of that crafting station to the object type name in there. So we can use it a bit later to uh, to check the recipes. For, uh, for referencing if there is a certain recipe containing one of the loots in that crafting station. So that's what happens when we're dragging towards a crafting station. What's happening whenever we're dragging towards an inventory slot? So it's very similar selections here. Uh, when we're dragging, we pick the nearest inventory slot, but we're not over the crafting background. So there's a negation here in that condition, not over the crafting background. Uh, so we pick the actor and its uh, inventory and the inventory count and we check if the layer is visible. 
And then we've got some local variables we'll be using. Um, so if the starting slot is lower than zero, the drag started from a crafting station. So what we do then is, if we're dragging from a crafting station, we need to determine which slot to drag to. And we do that using a function called find slot for, for and then we uh, have an active actor, we pass along the actor, and then the object name. It will return the number of a slot, but this function, as you'll see in a bit, will check if there is some slot already for that actor containing that object type name, and if that is, it will return that slot, and if there is none, it will actually return the first free slot. So we just retain that slot, and then in the inventory we set the value to that object type name, and we get the current count first of that slot, we add one to it, and we set it into the inventory count. And then we just refresh the slot count. And if the uh, current count is bigger than zero, it means that we have to destroy that loot. So we're dragging from a crafting station back to the inventory. There's no need to have two loot images above one another. Its current count is bigger than zero, so the loot can just be destroyed because there's already a loot image in the inventory. So then we pick all of the inventory slots, so we just reset the picking again, just like we did with the crafting station. We reset the picking of that inventory slot, so we can re-pick, reselect the slot we just selected here, and we move that to that slot. And then we pick the crafting station, uh, finally, uh, where we started from, and then we reset its station content, so it's uh, empty again. So that's what we do here. There's also an else branch, which means that the starting slot is not negative, so we're, we're actually dragging from an other inventory slot to a new inventory slot. Uh, so what we do if that slot is empty, so we're dragging from an other inventory slot into a new inventory slot, and if it's empty, we snap the loot to that inventory slot, that's what we do here. And what we do is call a function called move slot content. And you'll see in a minute what that does, and it's exactly as it says what it does. It moves the slot content from a starting slot to a, a destination slot. And we refresh the slot counters of both the starting slot and the destination slot. So if that slot happens not to be empty, we need to move the, the, the content back to the original slot. And uh, for that, we also call a function called move loot back. Uh, so that's what happens here. So whenever we push the crafting button, and the dialog layer is visible of course, the first thing we'll do is we'll pick the crafting station uh, with station number number one, and we retain uh, the loot contained in it and the UID of that loot into some local variables. And we'll do the same thing with the station number two. And then we check if both loots are different from uh, from empty, so both crafting stations have been filled, actually, then we'll go and loop through the recipes. And whenever we find a recipe where the first ingredient is loot 1 and the second is loot 2, or the first is loot 2 and the second is loot 1, then we'll get the an object type with uh, that uh, result value from the JSON file. And we will create it. Um, and the dialog label at the craft result. And we set a flag called found to one. Uh, so if no recipe was found, so whenever the loop ends and this found never set to one, this remains zero because it was initialized to uh, zero here. Uh, and then we can say, okay, there's an invalid combination. Or when it's not zero, it means that something is found. Then we set item crafted. And what we do is we start a timer for one second and the timer is called put back. Uh, that will take care of the fact that the loot will remain in the uh, in the result, a uh, crafting station result for one second and then it will be put back into the inventory. The last thing we need to do is just we pick the loots that were in the crafting stations and we destroy them because they are out of the inventory now. Um, so if there is not two loots inside the crafting station, we also have a message saying, okay, select two ingredients. That's what we're doing here. So um, 
we set starting slot when dragging from an uh, inventory slot in a crafting station. I just showed you that in a few minutes ago. And this is the uh, the timer put back. So if you uh, looked at some of my other videos before, you know I'm a big fan of having like a dummy object in here called the timer object, which is then responsible for any timer logic inside the game. So that's what I did here again. And that timer uh, object has raised a put back timer. Whenever that's uh, whenever that's done. We will pick the loot that's in the crafting result right now, and we also pick the active instance, uh, the instance of the active actor. So once we do that, we can also pick the inventory and the inventory count of that active actor. Uh, so when the time fires, we pick the loot from the crafting results along with the active actor, and then we find the correct slot. And again, we use this find slot uh, find slot for function, given the actor and the object type loot name. Uh, we pick the inventory slot uh, that was determined here in the variable called new slot and then we move we set the move speed to 3000 uh, we set crafting to one we move the loot towards that inventory and the reason why we do that set crafting to one is that because in a moment I'll show you that on move to arrived is also uh, a, 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 an event which we're checking but it can be moving because there was crafting going on, or it can be moving because it was uh, put back on another location, for example. So only when we're crafting, uh, and only in that case, this needs to happen here. So then we move to a certain direction here, the inventory slot X and Y coordinates. We update the inventory count. We set the inventory to that object type name and the inventory count to the, the, the number it was, plus one. And we refresh that count. So whenever that crafting arrives, and we do check crafting equals 1, because that's what we're setting here. Um, the first thing we do is we uh, have a new slot, and we set the new slot to uh, find slot 4. And whenever the inventory count uh, is bigger than 0, then we will also uh, destroy uh, the uh, loot. Because there's also there's already going to be one in there in that inventory slot. So we don't need to have two loots on the same spot in the inventory. So that's it. Um, then there's the dialog functions. There's a number of dialog functions here. Uh, the show dialog here we can see is that we're showing the dialog by showing the layer and we also uh, activate the dialog interaction group here. This group is going to be activated, so all of these uh, events are fired whenever the dialog is active. Uh, the opposite happens uh, where with high dialog, where we'll set the dialog to invisible and we'll deactivate the dialog interaction. So whenever we do uh, show dialog, what we do is uh, we pick the loot by evaluating the layer name and we destroy all of the loot that might be already on that dialogue because we can switch uh, between the dialogues of the two different actors um, and we need to be recreating that dialogue from scratch so the first thing we'll do is destroy all the loot that was on that dialogue so next we pick the actor and its inventory we set the text of the title saying Jack's inventory or John's inventory um, and then for each key in the inventory dictionary what we do is we pick the correct inventory slots we also pick the correct uh, the, the counter sprite here and we refresh the slot counter and whenever that's not empty we create a value um, uh, the inventory current value on that dialog meaning it's creating a new loot object on that dialog so high dialogue uh, what we'll do here it's a bit special um, if you remember how it works uh, uh, as i explained to you a few minutes ago whenever we put something from the uh, diction uh, from the uh, inventory into a crafting station it actually gets removed from the inventory and added to the crafting station but suppose that uh, you've added two things to the crafting station and then you press escape so that it's it's it's, it's uh, the dialogue closes by by, by, show, by hiding the dialogue here, setting the dialogue invisible and deactivating the group, what would happen is the, the, the loot that was in your crafting station would, would be gone. 
it would be out of the inventory and be remain out of the inventory. So what we do here is whenever we hide it out, we need to check if there's something in the crafting station or in the result of that crafting station. Um, and we have to add that loot back into the inventory from that crafting station or the result of the crafting station. That's what it does here. So the initialize dialog function, as we saw earlier, where it's called at the start of the layout. The only thing it does is it checks if there are counter sprites visible on the screen. And then for each inventory slot, what we will do is create an extra object sprite, counter sprite, on that position of the inventory slot X plus the width divided by 2 and Y minus the height divided by 2. So it's uh, actually the, the counter sprite is uh, set to um, that exact uh, position on the screen. And then we also set the variable called slot to uh, be able to identify which slot that counter sprite uh, belongs to. Actually. So then there's a whole bunch of uh, helper functions. So the clear crafting station, this function is called whenever the user drops loot onto the crafting station where there is already loot on there. And so in that case, the dragged loot should go into the crafting station, but the loot that's already there, that should move back into the inventory. And that's what happens here. So we pick the loot, we pick the instance of the active actor and we pick its inventory and its inventory count. And then we pick the, uh, the, the crafting station with that station number we pick here. Um, what we do, we also pick the loot overlapping the crafting station. But if I was right, that loot will actually pick two loots, being the one that's already on the crafting station and the one that's being dropped onto the crafting station. But there's only one of the two needing to go back. So what we will do is we pick the crafting station by the number passed as the parameter and we see what's on top of it. When calling this function, there will be two loots currently over the crafting station the one is being dropped and the one is already in there so the one that's being dropped is passed along as a second parameter called accept loot so we exclude that loot in the next picking action right here so we find the slot for that loot again using the find slot for function we set the inventory for the loot we set uh, the current counter uh, we increase that and we refresh it and then we pick the infantry loot um, so select slot for that loot to move to and if the, the current count is bigger than zero we need to destroy it again to have not more than one loot in the same inventory uh, position and we can also reset the station uh, content here so that's what we do so move loot back this function takes a loot and moves it back to a spot in the inventory either by coming from a crafting station or from another position in the inventory so we just pick the loot yeah? if the, the start slot is smaller than zero so we're coming from a crafting station here we get the correct slot again using the find slot four so we pick the inventory slot here uh, for the new slot we move it back um, else we pick the starting slot and we move it to that starting slot basic stuff here uh, refresh slot counter is just to refresh the number in that uh, the, the, the counter sprite that's what we do so we get an actor and a slot passed along so we select the actor and its inventory and then we pick also the inventory slots and the counter sprite going along with it um, so if the inventory count is smaller or equal than one then we no need to show that counter sprite so we set the opacity to zero but whenever it's bigger than one, we need to show it, and uh, we set the opacity to 100, and we also set the text of the image. So the find slot 4 is the function we've already talked about a few times. There, it uh, results in the correct slot to be used in the inventory. So we pass along the actor and the loot we are trying to find the spot for. So we start by picking the actor and its inventory, and we loop through the inventory and refrain retain the first empty slot if there is one but if you if you find a slot containing the loot that we want we retain that one so if the uh, if it's empty and the empty slot is minus one so it, it is the, the the default value is minus one so if it's still minus one and we find an empty one we set empty slot to that loot index uh, and but if the inventory slot already is the loot we set the result value here. 
So whenever the result value is still minus one, being that we never found that loot here, we can set the result value to the empty slot we saved earlier here. So that's what we do. We actually overwrite the result value with the empty slot whenever we don't write the result value uh, for, the, uh, empty, for, the, for the loot we found. Actually, that's what it does. Um, then add loot is very simple. We get a loot and actor. We just select the actor. We find the slot. If we add the loot to that actor, remove is just the opposite. Find the slot and remove it. And then move slot content is we get an actor passed along, a from slot and a to slot. And what we do is just we pick the actor and the inventory and the inventory count and we move it uh, to that. Uh, we move it out of the from slot and into the to slot. That's uh, what we actually. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this explanation. I hope you enjoy uh, the template. Um, I will leave a link in the description to uh, the Sierra store where you can get this template. As always, please like and subscribe and see you next time.